So welcome back to microbiological risk analysis. We are now going to start looking at risk communication. By now we have started we have already looked at risk assessment and risk management. So we'll see that um, risk communication is an integral part of risk analysis. I'm sure we all remember this um, framework of uh, risk analysis. We see that we have the scientific part, which is the risk assessment, and then we have more of the political or the policy uh, aspect of risk analysis, which is risk assessment, okay? But covering all those um, aspects now is risk communication, okay? And what we'll see, and from our previous interaction, you have realized by now that risk communication actually happens throughout all those um, technical or um, uh, policy aspects of risk analysis. Okay, so according to the Codex Alimentarius Commission, they define risk communication as an interactive exchange of information and opinions throughout the risk analysis process. Okay, so the risk assessors, uh, risk managers, risk uh, consumers, industry, academia, and any other interested parties um, are involved and they look at uh, this exchange of information with regards to the risks, any risk-related factors, and risk perceptions, okay? So this then also includes the explanation of uh, the risk assessment findings and the basis of any risk management decisions that have been uh, proposed or implemented. So as we mentioned that we are looking at um, an interactive process where we are constantly and regularly exchanging uh, information, including opinions uh, concerning that particular risk or risk-related factors or risk perception, as well as how we are managing that risk, okay? Who is involved in this process of uh, this interactive exchange of information? We have the risk assessors themselves who actually did the, who conducted the risk assessment, we have the consumers who actually consume uh, that product, okay, that particular food product that um, that particular risk is, is related to. Okay, we have the risk managers themselves, the ones that actually implement the risk management um, options. Any other interested parties um, are also involved in risk communication. Okay, so if we remember from our risk um, management framework, we see then that um, risk communication actually plays a, a very important role in each of those uh, sections of our risk management framework. Starting from the very beginning where we are looking at our preliminary uh, risk management activities, where we are coming up with our risk profile, we need to communicate those findings. Okay, From the time that we are coming up with the, that food safety issue, we commission a risk profile, and we come up with management or proposed um, options for managing that particular risk in the preliminary stages, okay? Then we go on and look at uh, selection of risk management options. Even there, we have uh, that interactive exchange of information to the time that we implement the risk management decision. And even then, when we are monitoring and reviewing uh, that implementation, okay? So then we see that risk communication is an inseparable uh, element of risk analysis as well as risk um, uh, management, okay? Also, what we see is uh, from our previous lessons looking at the WTO uh, SPS agreement and uh, the TBT agreement, we've seen that they've put strong emphasis on risk communication, okay? And we see this in the, in the emphasis of these principles of transparency and consistency and even how uh, we go through the development and application of food safety controls. All that is risk communication, okay? Transparency, uh, the SPS agreement says when you're coming up with these food safety um, measures, it needs to be transparent, okay? You need to document, okay? You need to inform the interested parties. You need to have uh, a consistent method, okay? So that uh, the levels of protection that you're putting in place are not uh, arbitrary. Okay, so all that is um, risk communication. So then um, for this unit, our objectives um, are that by the end of this unit, you should be able to discuss the principles related to risk communication, 
you should be able to differentiate um, strategies that are used in risk communication, and you should be able to describe the barriers um, that uh, affect uh, risk communication. Okay, so this is just the first uh, component of risk communication. Uh, then other component will look at um, the barriers and how we engage uh, stakeholders. Yep. So to get started, what is the goal of risk communication? Why should we communicate um, our food safety risks? Okay. So the principal goal of risk communication is that we need to protect public health. Okay. And to do this through risk communication is that we are providing information to the public so that they are able to make informed decisions about that particular food safety risk, okay? So if somebody is going to eat a particular food with a particular hazard, they should do that with uh, an informed background of uh, that particular food safety risk, okay? So we are protecting public health by making sure that we are providing information that will enable people to make informed decisions, okay? So risk communication then aims to provide information that will improve the knowledge about the nature and effects of that particular food safety risk. Okay, so when we are providing this information that will inform decision, then we're looking at how that um, communication improve the knowledge of the person about that particular risk. So they have to have some sort of uh, knowledge increase about the nature of that risk and what, uh, it will result in, okay, so the effects of that particular food safety risk. So for risk communication then to achieve that goal of providing information that will uh, later result into an informed decision, that information has to be timely. It should be given um, within an adequate time that, to, that somebody can make that decision, okay? It should be meaningful, it should add value Okay, it should be relevant to that particular food safety risk. It should be accurate, okay? And it should be given in such a manner that it's, the message is very clear and it's easy to understand and it should be targeted at a specific audience, okay? So what you don't want is to give a message out to the public in a manner that people will not understand, okay? That will disfranchise them and they will not be able to get any value out of that uh, message, okay? So... The message should be clear and it should be a, people should be able to understand it. Okay. So risk communication specific goals. Okay. So these include to promote awareness and understanding among all um, uh, interested stakeholders of that uh, particular food safety issue under consideration during the risk analysis process. Okay. So we need to create this awareness and make sure that all the stakeholders are at a level of understanding um, the, the particular issues that are related to that food safety issue. Okay. Also, it promotes consistency and transparency in arriving at and implementing risk management uh, options, okay? Because there's that constant information, people know the procedures that they need to follow, so there's that consistency and there's uh, transparency in arriving at um, risk management options. Okay. It provides a sound basis for understanding the proposed and or implemented uh, risk management options. Okay. It improves the overall effectiveness and efficiency of the risk analysis process because you're constantly exchanging information. Okay, so even the risk assessors are, are quickly uh, and get, they're getting information about that particular risk so they can uh, effectively carry out their risk analysis and then we we'll go and provide that information then to the risk managers and they can quickly come up with their management uh, options and decisions. Okay. So also risk communication strengthens working relationships and mutual respect among stakeholders. Okay. It fosters public understanding of the process so that there's trust that is built and confidence is built in the food safety, in the, in the safety of the food supply and control system. Okay, because the public knows what you're doing and you're constantly engaging them uh, with, with uh, regards to that particular food safety issue. So they have that um, understanding and they're able to trust that you're providing them with the correct uh, information. 
It promotes appropriate involvement of all interested parties, and we'll see later on why this is very important that all interested parties are involved. So with that uh, constant um, exchange of information, we are also uh, getting all the interested parties involved. Okay. So the exchange of information also um, concerning the risk also looks at how we can improve the knowledge, attitudes, values, and practices, okay, concerning that particular uh, food safety risk. It also contributes to the development and delivery of effective information and education program, okay, education programs, because we are constantly engaging either the public or other stakeholders. So we look at how best are we delivering this message, okay. So we see then that risk communication is a two-way process, okay? So there's a receiver and a giver, and then there's feedback between the two, okay? So risk communication then can happen either internally, that's between the risk managers and the risk uh, assessors, okay? That's the risk uh, management and risk assessment teams, that's internally, okay? But then it can also, it also happens actually externally, where the members of the risk analysis team now are communicating with external stakeholders, including the public about that particular um, risk of concern, okay? So we see that everyone now who is involved in risk analysis is in some way a risk communicator, okay? Or at least at some point in the process, they are a risk communicator, okay? Whether you're a manager or you're a risk assessor, at some point, you have to carry out some risk communication. Okay, so then it becomes uh, quite important that um, these risk assessors and managers, including external uh, stakeholders, have some skills uh, and some expertise in uh, risk communication. Okay, and we also see that some food um, safety institutions actually have communication and specialists who are tasked to carry out this function. So when we look at models on how we can conduct our risk assessment, we can uh, look at two broad models, okay? So the first model is where you have one member in the risk management team who is tasked with the overall coordination of all risk uh, communication uh, jobs, okay? So, so this person will just coordinate, okay? And then um, um, delegate the work, okay? In the other model, we look at where you have maybe one or more risk communication uh, experts. So these will just plan, design, and implement all the risk uh, communication process, okay? As part of that risk analysis team. So whatever model you use, whether you have one person who's coordinating and then they delegate, or you have one or more communication specialists who do all the risk communication, the idea is that um, the model should clearly define, okay? and identify the responsibilities uh, for risk communication from the very beginning before you actually begin your risk analysis process, okay? So that everybody knows what their role is and what they're supposed to do in communicating that risk, okay? So it is also very vital that um, there is meaningful participation of all relevant stakeholders and all incoming and outgoing uh, information is clearly received and understood. So whatever model you use, okay, we make sure that the roles are clearly defined and whatever information is coming and going out of our team is clearly uh, received and understood, okay? So we have been talking about engaging stakeholders or having interested parties, uh, part of this uh, risk uh, communication, where um, communicating with all these other people, including the general uh, public. So then who are these uh, stakeholders and how do we engage them, okay? So these stakeholders um, usually participate at appropriate points in the risk management or risk assessment uh, framework, okay? So it is based on specific criteria and defined roles. Depending on what uh, that specialty of that stakeholder is, then they can be asked to participate at various points as appropriate um, according to the risk management framework or risk assessment, okay? It is very important to identify and engage uh, correct stakeholders because this enhances the outcome of the risk analysis process, 
It provides essential opportunities to bridge any gaps either in language, or process, or understanding, perceptions, as well as values of that risk. Okay, so you have all these people bringing in their different expertise to the team. It provides an opportunity for any parties that are affected to either hear, consider, and respect the views and ideas and recommendations about the, the risk in question. It enhances transparency because you're engaging them right from the beginning and they constantly know what is going on. Okay? That also then lessens um, the opposition to a particular risk management decision that could be uh, implemented, therefore making that risk management decision more effective and sustainable. So you have uh, buy-in and ownership of that risk management decision. So no one will come and say, oh, no, I wasn't part of this. I will not support um, this risk management decision. Okay. But an important aspect when you have stakeholders on board is to define their roles. Okay. Remember that these people will play uh, certain roles at appropriate points in the risk management framework. So then we need to clearly define their roles. Okay. What are they doing? What uh, support are they bringing? What expertise are they bringing? And at what point in the risk management framework uh, do we involve this particular stakeholder or stakeholders? Okay. So some of the roles that these stakeholders could have is maybe right at the beginning of the risk um, analysis, maybe to frame the food safety problem. Okay. So we bring in these stakeholders to help us frame the food safety problem appropriately. Okay. Or they can help in identifying other issues that need to be addressed through risk management. Okay. They could also be very important sources of information. For example, uh, stakeholders like academia or research institutions. Okay. So these ones provide um, at least some valuable uh, sources of information that your risk assessment or your risk management can be based on. Okay. They help develop risk assessment questions. They provide comments, okay, on the results of the risk, either the risk profile or the risk assessment, and they also help to validate that information that uh, you have brought out in the risk profile or the risk um, assessment, okay? But the, the nature and extent of these stakeholder roles depends on many factors, okay? For example, the complexity, um, uncertainty, impact, and level of controversy associated with that particular decision that is made. Okay, so there you have to be careful depending on how complex or the impact or any controversy that is associated with that particular decision that is made. And then you have to make sure that your uh, the stakeholders that you engage are aligned to, to those things. Okay, also the agency with which the problem must be addressed okay so you might look at certain uh, stakeholders who will not uh, hinder say the implementation of that agent um, risk management decision okay the extent to which participants have a genuine influence on the risk management decision so if the decision is not really negotiable then maybe um, we shouldn't even bother to bring in stakeholders okay other considerations we look at is who might be affected by that risk management decision, okay? Including those groups that know or believe that they're affected, okay? So we might want to bring them in. Or including those uh, groups that are affected, but they do not know it yet, okay? So we want to bring them in so that they know that they will be affected by this particular risk, and this is how we plan to, to manage it, okay? So... We also look at who has information and expertise uh, that might be helpful to our, either our risk assessment or our risk management, okay? So remember that stakeholders are an important source of information, so we look at who has that information and expertise and we bring them uh, in. Who has been involved in similar risk situations? So they already have that experience, so we consider them also for our, um, as part of our stakeholders. Who has expressed interest in being involved in um, a similar decision before? Okay, who should be rightly involved, uh, even if they haven't asked to be involved, so we need to bring them uh, on board. And who might be uh, angered if we left them out? Okay, so we need to put all those uh, considerations into place. Okay, 
Examples of potential uh, stakeholders include all those depending on the uh, food safety issue or risk that you're looking at, you could consider uh, some of those examples or all of them in some cases. Okay, so take home message for this um, subunit is that remember that risk uh, communication looks at uh, protecting public health by providing information that is meaningful, that is relevant, that is accurate, it's in clear and understandable terms, and it's targeted to a specific audience, okay? So you will not take the same message to everybody, but you, you, you tailor it to a particular audience, okay? So should you uh, communicate that risk in a language that is uh, specific to that area, is it a, a vernacular language, or are you reporting that risk to technical people? So you target um, that particular audience and, and uh, communicate that risk um, appropriately, okay? So risk, risk communication is ongoing, okay? We saw from the framework that risk communication starts right from the uh, preliminary risk management uh, steps where we are commissioning our risk profile. So it's ongoing and we're involving all relevant stakeholders so that our communication is effective and sustainable, okay? And we also say that risk communication is a two-way process where we are communicating internally as risk assessors and risk managers, but we are also taking out the message externally to all interested um, stakeholders. So with that, I say thank you for your attention.